Hey, it's me, Caroline, your friendly neighborhood thereminist. Here's what I'm good at, playing theremin. Here's what I'm not good at, science. So if you're a tech wizard, music nerd kind of dude who knows exactly about music gear and technology and all of the things, this isn't the video for you. If you, however, are somebody like me who is a musician, who is obsessed with music and who is infinitely curious, but who has maybe been a little bit intimidated by the electronic music world or really just like has never been that person that used to get all A's in science, then stick around. So I've been playing the theremin for about six years now and and the whole time I have been insanely curious about like how it actually works. Like I can read the guidebooks all day that come with it. I can watch all of the nerdy techie videos about these people like who already know what's going on and it just does not connect in my brain. So I decided to go straight to the source. I called up Moog Music, the heart and the manufacturer behind all of these incredible theremins. And I asked them if I could come in and if they could school me in the science behind how the theremin actually works, how it makes sounds. And they said, yeah, come on by. So that is where we are going in this video. I'm gonna take you with me into the Moog factory in Asheville, North Carolina. And we are going to go on a wild adventure. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a little bit more understanding of how the theremin actually works and the science behind it and inside of it. So while we're at it, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more theremin related content and let's dive in. I've been playing this instrument for like five years that I taught myself and I'm also not a scientist or like a cool tech wizard. And so I realized that I don't really know what science is happening underneath the hood and I really wanted to. And okay. so that's why I came to you. <laughs> awesome, okay, well I'll do my best. Leon Theremin was actually doing an experiment. He was measuring the dielectric constants of air. <laughs> he happened to have a buzzer. He moved his hand near one of the electrodes, one of the plates, and heard mm. And he was like, hmm. And it's, I mean, it's like literally, probably like, mm. you know. <laughs> that was probably the first, <laughs> the first peeps that he heard. And being a, a, an inventor and a curious person, he explored it. And then he started, he's also a musician, so he started like, hey, I can make music with this thing. Wow. And that was the beginning of that. So, um, okay, so it really was like an accidental instrument. The part where it was developed into the instrument was not an accident. Sure, but he didn't set out he to, didn't set out to do make it. this thing that to was be a musical instrument. That was not his intention. Just lucky. No. Yeah. That discovery was made at the dawn of radio electronics. There wasn't a large body of circuitry devoted to electronic sounds. There's a circuit it's called an oscillator. It's connected to that antenna. One of the components in that oscillator is called a capacitor. All right, a capacitor in, in, in science is two conductors that are separated by an insulator, okay. all right? If you try and pass electricity across it, just like if you hooked up a battery, mm -hmm. nothing would go across it because there's an insulator, right? But when you wiggle that signal around, stuff starts to go across, right? Because it creates a field and the field transfers from this plate to this plate. So that's one of the components that's in there and then you form kind of a parallel capacitor with that. Nerd term is you're loading the circuit. If you want to know, it gets a little deeper. So that oscillator that you're loading is mixed with another oscillator that you're not loading. And what you're hearing is the difference between those two. Whoa. It's a principle called heterodyning. For instance, uh, yeah. if I, if I, if I turn, turn this off here. So right now they're, they're at equal frequency. The difference is zero. And as I move, you start to hear the difference between the two. Um. Gotcha. Yeah. So, uh, in a nutshell, there's a couple technical explanations controlling the pitch antenna. Badass. So, looking at this, can you actually like point with your finger and take us on the teeny tiny little journey through the instrument? Well, I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of stuff happening here. So, okay. It's quite a journey, guys. But these, the, the little green piece is what you call a printed circuit board. It's like epoxy and fiberglass. On it, there's copper that makes conductive uh, connections. And then if you look on, on it, you'll see all these little parts. Those are components. This is where the power comes in, right here. You have the oscillators. There's three oscillators in the instrument. This is the one for the volume, all right? Mm -hmm. This is the one for the, 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 we call it the fixed pitch, the one that just is kind of controlled by the pitch control here. Okay. And then this is the, the variable pitch oscillator. So then, over here, 
these are antenna boards. They're just they're essentially coils or a network of coils that are then connected to the antennas. So this is for your volume side, this is for your pitch side. This is where you load these circuits to get, in this case, the, that control signal that goes up and down that we looked at. Yeah. And in this case, where we, we load this circuit, just to change it that tiny little bit that when you mix this with that, mm -hmm. you get the entire <laughs> musical range. But um, yeah, that's basically it. Wow. That's all, this, that's all the <laughs> that's stuff. It. That's all. It. The oscillator circuits in this device are actually pretty simple. They're based off of inductor and the capacitor and some transistors working together to make a signal like that. It's a, it's a sine wave. Wow. And this device that we're looking at the, the signal on is called an oscilloscope. And so what you're seeing is across the right, you're seeing time and going up and down you're seeing amplitude right wow. so you know the signal goes high, wow. and low, high, and high how cool is that with the cover off and sitting on this table it's a little funky it sure, doesn't, it sure, doesn't sure. act quite like a normal servant but you can see as i get close it goes quiet as i get loud so yeah. you have controls on the front, the volume range. This tunes the rate of change of how much your capacitance loads the circuit. So what that means is if I turn this down, it, it changes very slow. Right. And as I turn this up, yeah, it changes really fast. So if you want to do like staccato-y kind of playing, you want to have that up. Pitch range, this like accounts for all the stuff around it. And you want to tune it so that like your, your body is the entire musical range that you want. And it might change a little bit depending on how high the uh, instrument is above the floor. Because right. guess what? You know, you're a capacitor. Everything around you might be a capacitor too. Yeah. Like, so the floor, a table, a wall. Your dog running by. Your dog running by. That's why you have these tuning controls. And then you have a couple timbre controls. You can make it kind of buzzy. I kind of like it in the middle. Okay. And then the, the waveform control, you can make it kind of a, a narrow sounding wave, mm -hmm. as I like to say, or a very full sounding wave. That's the stuff that's on the outside. Ugh, amazing. Well, Steve, thank you so much. Oh, thanks for the opportunity. This was so yeah. fun, and I yeah. feel like I am walking out knowing a little bit more, at well, least. <laughs> I'm so thrilled to have the opportunity to teach you a little bit more about the, the workings of it, because yeah. you found this instrument, you made it your own. You should keep doing that. Um, I really, I really look forward to hearing what you do with this instrument and, and all these folks out there who are exploring this thing. It's an amazing, amazing instrument. Um, it deserves your attention and your practice and your love. I agree. Yes. High five. Cool. High five. We did it. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So the blue electrons come in through here, right? They basically do. Okay. And then they visit somewhere over here. <laughs> and then boop -a -doop -a -doop, somehow over here, because these are the copper wires. Right, Steve? That's right. These are they're, like the roads. Yeah, they're called traces. That is how they travel, and they're traveling through all of these nifty little places, and they're hitting all of these things basically at once because they're moving at the speed of light. And that is the test that I passed, right? Yeah. That's essentially. Yeah, yeah you did great.